Hello and welcome. My name is Kathleen Ruddy. I'm the CEO of the St. Baldrick's Foundation, where we grow heroes for kids with cancer. And you're about to meet a special one. Bodhi Centaur is an eight-time Chevy, seven-time team captain, and first-year volunteer event organizer for St. Baldrick's. And he's only 17. His efforts have led hundreds of people to support childhood cancer research, and in the process, he's raised more than $125,000 for this mission. Welcome, Bodhi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Bodhi, we're thrilled you're here. We're big fans of yours and all that you do, so let's get into it. Um, you've been a volunteer and a leader for St. Baldrick's for half your life. Mm -hmm. Was that your plan when you started? Yeah, so definitely I wasn't looking this far ahead when I first started. You know, I was seven years old when I first shaved. And that first year, I just thought it would be a good idea. It'd be a fun thing to do and a good cause. Um, and then after the first time I shaved, I, I was kind of hooked. You know, I, it was clear to me that it wasn't going to be something I was going to stop doing anytime soon. And from there, it just kept growing and getting bigger and bigger and, you know, became a pretty, pretty big part of my life. So it is crazy to think about that uh, from that point. Now it's been, you know, nine years over half my life and, you know, a really important journey. So you, the experience of shaving hooked you, but there were friends who inspired you to get involved. Can you tell us about them? Yeah. So, you know, I had a lot of, you know, friends who I had and kids who had cancer, who, you know, I knew at, at different points on my journey that, you know, kind of, inspired me uh, in different ways and sort of, you know, pushed me on my journey. So one of the first kids that I knew who had cancer was, he was named Ocasio and he was uh, younger than me when I met him. And it was just really, you know, sort of almost profound for me to meet him and see a kid, you know, so much younger than me who was dealing with, you know, such a difficult disease. And it really kind of inspired me to work harder and try to fundraise as much as I could, um, you know, to help him and kids like him. Um, and then as I went on with my journey later on, there was actually a girl who I knew who was in my class at school named McKenna, you know, who had cancer and, you know, that inspired me as well. Uh, another kid, uh, a good family friend of ours named Archie, uh, he had cancer when he was just, I think, six months old, seven months old, maybe. And that was another one, like these kids are so young and they're dealing with such a difficult disease. So it really inspired me and, you know, pushed me to raise more. Um, when I was first getting started, actually, I had pneumonia and I was in the hospital for a few days and that it was clear to me that that was not a fun experience at all and that these kids who had cancer were dealing with things so much worse than that. So that was really, you know, pushing me in my journey and inspiring me to raise more. Um, and actually, one of the last kids who I met on my journey was named Charlie when uh, in my later years, and he was about my age. He was actually a little bit older than me. Uh, I think that was in my second to last year of shaving. And that was, you know, one of the final kids who I met who really inspired me to raise more money and, you know, support the cause as much as I could. Well, it's rare that a young person would know that many people, uh, uh, fellow kids yeah. with cancer at such a young age when they weren't a, a patient themselves. Yeah. Um, it, I can see why that made an impact on you, but it was very mature of you to be able to understand your own health experience and how others had it worse and beautiful that you were inspired to to help them yeah so Bodhi, you've shaved your head eight times at kitty hoings um that for our audience that doesn't know um is an irish pub in syracuse new york and i want to take a moment and just give a shout out to a few people you know well there Bodhi. um david and Cindy hoin the owners of of kitty hoins Sophia Mescos and Chow Downey for their generosity and just unflagging leadership for 15 years because all of you together have made Syracuse a premier St. Baldrick City. Yes. So, Bodhi, back to you. Um, what did you like most about shaving and what advice would you give to other students who are considering it? Yeah, so like I said, uh, that first time that I shaved, it was just an incredible event to me. Um, Kitty Hoynes is just packed with shavies on shave day. Uh, it's such an atmosphere. It's such a great environment. Um, you know, everybody is working towards the same goal. Everybody's involved with the same cause. And it's just a really great community feeling and just a really awesome experience. You know, I was really nervous to shave the first time. Uh, 
I didn't know what it was going to be like, but when I went there, everything was just clearly like, everything's going to be all right. It's, it's an awesome cause and all these people are a part of it. So I just love that, you know, community feeling and that, uh, you know, sense of involvement and accomplishment that came with it. So I would just say to anyone else, anyone who's considering shaving, anyone who's nervous about it, like I was, you know, don't be afraid. It's a really awesome experience. You know, anywhere that is hosting an event, just like Kitty Hoynes, I'm sure is, you know, in an incredible environment with, you know, a ton of people all super dedicated to the cause that are just going to support you so much and make it, you know, an incredible event and a great experience. That's phenomenal to hear. Um, what's the secret to your fundraising success? Well, like I said earlier, when I first decided to shave, you know, I was seven years old, so I wasn't thinking too much about it. But as I went on through the years, I started to set higher goals for myself and pick up more fundraising techniques. So a few of those techniques that helped me out were I would have write a handwritten letter and I'd go door to door and also send it to a bunch of people that we knew and get more and more donors each year. And then I started to, as I got older, you know, put in more fundraising tactics. Like I would go to rotary clubs and speak. I would put out jars at, you know, local businesses in the community, like with my face on them and a little message and collect donations that way. I even held like a, a charity workout and uh, a collection at church once. So I was just trying to get as many different techniques as I could in there to help me reach my goals. And I would say that as I went on, you know, what really helped me succeed was just setting higher goals for myself. And as I went, just, you know, trying to raise more and more money and staying determined and persistent. And that just kind of helped me excel each year. And the other thing that I think was really important in my fundraising was just making kind of a personal connection with your donors. Like I would handwrite thank you notes and, you know, just be very, you know, thoughtful, as thoughtful as I could be, you know, in my fundraising techniques and try to make that connection and, uh, you know, people enjoy supporting me. So it's very helpful. As you were speaking, I was thinking of that because I was fortunate to get not only your thank you notes, but your solicitations. Yes. And I would bring them in to the office and share them with colleagues because I felt like it was such a great example and and special. It, your, your ask stood out because you took the time to make it personal and reach out to each person. So you've done a phenomenal job. Thank you. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Jody Centuri, a nine-year student leader at the St. Baldrick's Foundation. And I apologize for the feedback on my end. We are playing with the sound behind the scenes trying to fix that. So, Bodhi, during the pandemic, you weren't able to say shave. So this year you created Buckets for St. Baldrick's. What is that and how did you come up with it? So Buckets for St. Baldrick's was my um, charity basketball tournament, which I held this year in lieu of, you know, shaving due to COVID and everything. So essentially I was trying to think of a way that I could help out the cause, you know, without shaving. Uh, and I still wanted to fundraise and I still wanted to, you know, help the community in some sort of way. And so after a lot of thought and, you know, trying to come up with an idea, I ended up coming up with Buckets for St. Baldrick's, which was the basketball tournament, um, which I came up with because I helped that recently before that uh, Griffin's Guardians soccer shootout tournament which was you know a soccer shootout for younger kids and i there was just so many kids there and it was just such a popular event and i thought you know there's so many you know kids who love playing sports and in my school west hill my district basketball is like probably the most popular sport from you know a young age all the way up and so like i remember going to basketball camps when i was younger um with the you know jv and varsity coaches and everything and it's a ton of fun so I thought, well, what if we go bigger and make it, you know, a tournament, a basketball tournament for St. Baldrick's, you know, really run it through West Hill, through my school with the coaches. And there's so many kids who just love basketball. So I ended up having the tournament be second grade all the way to ninth grade. And it, you know, a ton of people signed up for, we had, a, you know, over 40 teams, I think, and just a ton of support from the community. And it ended up being just a really great event and a really fun experience. And how did you raise the money through that? So we raised money in a few ways. First of all, that we had an entry fee for the team so that, you know, they would enter the end of the tournament. We'd raise money that way. We also had um, sponsorships. I would, you know, talk to local businesses, people who I knew who owned businesses who would sponsor the event. And then also just my conventional 
sending out a letter, you know, looking for donations to the tournament, you know, like I've always done kind of the old reliable and kind of the combination of that three just was able to generate a lot of support for the tournament. Well done. It, it, it's tremendous. And I hope a lot of other young people follow your lead and want to replicate a tournament in their town. If you could give those future leaders some tips, whether they want to start a tournament or some other fundraising activity, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So I just say kind of three main things. The first one would just be, you know, be creative when you're coming up with it. You know, don't be afraid to, you know, think outside the box and kind of go outside of what conventional fundraising you might be thinking of. Uh, I just kind of, I came up with the tournament completely just off of a combination of things and it ended up being a great success. So just be creative with your ideas. Also, once you have your idea, you know, you want to set goals for yourself. You want to have a plan because when you have steps to follow things you can do, you know, it makes it a lot easier to get things done and, you know, build up to your ultimate event there and, you know, make it as successful as possible. And the last one is just don't be afraid to go out there and do it. Don't be nervous. You know, it's okay. I mean, it's natural to be nervous when you're coming up with an event, when you're, you know, going out on a limb like that, but just stick with it. If you're passionate about it and you put the effort into it, you know, you're going to have a great event. So, you know, go out there and do it. That's great advice and have fun along the way. I think yes. um, we should put the fun in fundraising. Yes, yes, yeah. for sure. That's a great So point. you raised more than $125,000 and you're only 17. So what's your goal for Buckets for St. Baldrick's and what else do you want to do in your life after high school? Yeah, so I mean, Buckets for St. Baldrick's was, it was a bigger success than I you know ever thought it could have been this year. So we're definitely going to, do it again next year. Um, and I think just try to, just like before with my fundraising, increasing the goal and everything, try to raise more money, you know, who knows? I'm not sure what the goal will be yet, you know, but I think that there's definitely a ton of kids who like basketball and a ton of, you know, space to grow the event into and just keep kind of increasing it. You know, uh, well, I can, you know, before I obviously go to college next year, like you're saying. So, after high school, um, you know, that's a good question. I, I definitely want to go to college. I, I don't know, you know, what I, where I want to go yet, but, you know, I'm in the process of like applying and, you know, figuring out majors and everything. Um, I'm interested in like science and technology and yeah. And I just want to, you know, keep helping St. Baldrick's as well as I go, you know, as much as I can and, you know, keep, keep helping the cause. Well, Bodhi, I predict you're going to be very successful, whatever path you choose, because you have a lot of great raw materials. You're very articulate. You're very mature. You're very caring. Um, and you are going to work hard as you have done up till now. So I know that you're going to be a success. I have loved um, your leadership. I was thrilled to meet you years ago. And I want to thank you on behalf of the foundation and all the kids we serve for um, being tireless on their behalf. Um, for all the work that you've done. You've, you're a personal inspiration to me and everybody here at St. Baldrick's headquarters. So, and thank you for being here today to share your wisdom with us. Well, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, it means a lot. And yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So to all of you in our audience, be sure to join us again on Thursday, August 11th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 Pacific, as we meet with Dr. Brigitte Weideman, one of the National Cancer Institute's point people on all things child of cancer and the Child of Cancer Data Initiative. Until then, thanks for remembering you don't have to be a lifeguard to save kids with cancer. Learn how by visiting stbaldricks.org.